You guys have to see what I'm working on. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. So it's that time of year. It's pond tour time. And you're probably thinking, what the heck? It's like mid to late October. Why the heck are you talking about pond tours right now? Especially when you guys know we just had a pond tour third week of September. Here's why I call it pond tour time because this time of year, we already start planning for the pond tours that are happening next year. And on this sheet of paper, I've got a list of all the ponds that we built last year or this year that I want to include on next year's pond tour. But I have to start planning for it now, and there's like 300 reasons why. So why do we start prepping? I'm gonna let Haley tell you why, because Haley's the one that's actually behind the scenes, behind the scenes, behind, behind the scenes on why we start prepping for it now, because there's so much logistical stuff going on. So Haley, take it away. Hi, I'm Haley, I'm the maintenance coordinator. I'm that person who's setting up all of what the maintenance team guys are doing each day. Hi, I'm Danielle, I am the construction coordinator and I schedule all the new builds and get all the materials and everything ready for the guys to get to work. The sooner you start planning for the pond tour, the better. Since we have, like Brian said, three separate pond tours that are going to be happening this next year, we want to get that started right away, even though we just just finished our last tour. The last pond tour that we just finished was a huge success. We sold over 144 tour tickets and 109 for the Fiesta Party at Brian's. So this year we had 18 different locations on the pond tour. Last year we had more than that. This year, since we're gonna have three different tours, they're all gonna be catered to slightly different situations. Like one of them is gonna be based on our pandemonium. So it'll be geared more towards contractors who are learning this business, who are already in this business and wanna see some really cool features. And then there's also the other pond tours that are again catered towards people in the area. We had people this year come from out of state to go on our pond tour. So we wanna make sure that there's a wide variety of things to see so that everyone Everyone gets to see something interesting, different, different kinds of features. We want to hit all of those boxes. So before we get into too much more about the pond tour, let's talk about the history of pond tours. <laughs> this is where it gets super exciting for you guys. But know it's important because a lot of you guys out there either want to go on a pond tour or are thinking, especially you contractors out there, are thinking about hosting your own pond tour. And so when I think about the history of pond tours, I'm really talking about the ones that we've probably screwed up because we've screwed up more pond tours than you guys have ever gonna do. So we started Pond Tours 30 plus years ago. Uh, it was always open to the public. We sold tickets. Uh, the tickets went to a charity, whether it be the Red Cross or the Ronald McDonald Foundation. We always found a charity and all the proceeds went to that charity. We started off with like 10 to 15 pounds on the tour and then it slowly grew. It grew to 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 50 to 60. In fact, one year I remember we had over 200 pounds on the tour. That was a screw up. <laughs> the logistical nightmare of figuring out directions for all of those ponds. Now this is before there was GPS and all that kind of stuff. We had to write down all the directions. And if you messed up one right or one left, not only did you piss off the host house because they spent the entire summer getting their pond ready for a pond tour, you pissed off a lot of attendees that wanted to go see that pond because they couldn't find it. So the logistical nightmare of having that many ponds was just not worth the reward. And really to have a successful pond tour, you don't need to have a lot of different ponds. I would say you do need to have a variety of ponds. You don't wanna have just $100,000 features and more. You wanna have stuff that ranges from fountainscapes, $4,000, $5,000 fountainscapes, up to hundreds of thousands of dollars for a pond. Then one year we started doing them for free. This was also a big mistake. There's something subliminally different for people when something's free. I think when it's free, it's like going to a free concert versus paying your thousand dollars for your Taylor Swift concert. If you spend a thousand dollars for a concert ticket, more than likely, you're gonna go to that concert. If we charge $20 for a ticket, it's harder for you to say, hey, I got something else going on. There's a little bit of buy-in. So we actually lost a lot of attendance when we did it for free. We started gaining attendance back when we started charging again for it. So don't do 
free pond tours. Charge, charge, charge. Another time, this was years ago, we also experimented with doing a pond tour every month. We had five pond tours in one month. And the idea was if you missed one because you had a family vacation, because kids graduation party, because uh, some sporting event, don't worry, we have another one happening next month. And the idea was every month just pick a different town. And we kind of bounced around from area to area. What I liked about that was the density of ponds were all in one town. So instead of driving from one end of the town all the way to the other end of the town to see another pond, everything was in like a 10 mile radius of each other. So you could see 10 ponds pretty effortless in one day. The thing I hated about it was there was five weekends in the summer that I had to commit to Aquascape. And uh, it was just tolling on all the employees here at Aquascape hosting that many different pond tours. Just recently, we've gone back to our basics. And the reason we went back to basics, when I think of back to basics, it's the pond tour I remember when I was a kid. When I say I was a kid, when I was 18. When I was 18 years old, starting to work for Aquascape, we had one pond tour. It was the, always the third week of July. It was actually the start of Pondemonium. And we had like 30 to 40 pounds on that tour and that was it. We charged back then, I think I think it was $12 a ticket. Now we charge $20 a ticket. And we, this year when we went back to basics, we knocked it out of the park. It was so, so nice. So that's kind of the history of pond tours. Hopefully that helps you guys a little bit with the logistical stuff, but we've got more to hear from Haley about some of the stuff that happens behind the scenes. Like Brian was talking about, we went back to basics this year and I wanted to just give you a little comparison of last year to this year and what I saw and what I heard from our customers. Last year we were way more spread out and there were a lot more ponds and it was so much harder to go see each pond and I got the impression from our customers that they didn't seem like they got a lot of foot traffic and then this year when we had made that more direct route we had fewer ponds it was way easier to get through all of these ponds just for an example last year and this year I went on the pond tour for one day and last year I was only able to see maybe six ponds in the entire day and this year I was able to see eight in half a day and it made a huge difference because our customers were so excited they kept telling me oh I had 80 people show up just on Saturday and they get this great feeling of being appreciated being proud of these great backyards and water features or even front yards that they've been enjoying ever since they started living the aquascape lifestyle all right so let's talk a little bit about why we do pond tours because they're awesome like i don't like know what else to say but they're awesome no they are so much fun to go out there and see the different designs see the different styles see the different sizes see how water moves differently but it's really to inspire educate motivate people to live that aquascape lifestyle. And yet we do this through YouTube, we do it through pictures, we do it through different social media platforms, but there's nothing like actually walking into the backyard of somebody living the aquascape lifestyle. It changes the way you feel. Right? Sometimes I get goosebumps walking into past customers' yards that I haven't seen for three to four years and seeing the plants mature. I get so inspired by the different plants, the different landscapes, the different outdoor kitchens, the different pergolas, the different fire pits, all these other elements that would have never been there if we hadn't put the pond in. And seeing some of those additions put into people's projects really, really helps me as a designer come up with new innovative ways to do bigger, more elaborate designs. So of course, we do the pond tour to try to grow our business. We want every year to build more and more and more ponds. And the easiest form of marketing for us is the pond tour. Social media works a lot, but there's nothing like actually feeding the fish, right? Dipping your toe in the water, listening to the waterfalls come down a uh, severe slope versus a gentle slope. And then even talking with our past customers, trying to understand 
what were some of the motivations on why they bought a pond? What were some of the things they would do differently if they were to do it all over again? What would be the one thing they would add to a water feature? Uh, what was the experience like when they had Aquascape build it for them? Like these are all such important, important things that I wish you could do with everything. Like imagine you did that with a dishwasher and you could actually talk to past customers that bought a dishwasher, but you don't get that. With water features and pond tours, you do. I know a lot of you guys are not thinking of starting your own pond tour. A lot of you guys just wanna go onto a pond tour, which is why you watch the channel, but there's a lot of contractors out there that are listening saying, how do I do a pond tour if I've only got a couple ponds in the ground? Or how do I choose the water features I'm gonna put on my pond tour? There's a couple key things. One, I would try to focus on density. If at all possible, try to get as many water features as you can within one township. No more than 15 miles apart from each other. That helps a lot because you're gonna get more and more people that say, okay, I think I can go see all three of these in a quick afternoon. So try to focus on density. The other thing I want you to try to do is focus on the sizes of the water features. Not all your water features should be big, giant, your most elaborate water feature. Remember, the amount of people that have hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend on a water feature is much, much smaller than the amount of people that have ten to twenty thousand dollars to spend on a water feature. So you want to show a variety. We want to show some fountainscapes. We want to show different types of fountainscapes. We want to show people that have fountainscapes in the front yard and a water feature in the backyard. We want to show people with pondless waterfalls, pondless waterfalls that have six foot, seven foot meandering streams, pondless waterfalls that have 20, 50, 60 foot meandering streams on a very gentle slope or bird loving type streams that I call them or pondless waterfalls that have big giant crashing waterfalls that disappear into um, sunken patios and all that kind of stuff. And then of course, different size ponds. What's a seven by nine foot pond look like compared to a swim pond? Uh, and to me, they're all exciting. In fact, tomorrow we're building a seven by nine foot pond and I'm so genuinely excited to actually go out and build that pond because it's gonna be the nicest seven by nine foot pond I've ever built. So make sure there's a big, big variety different types of ponds, different costs to the ponds. The third thing I would say is, uh, of course, um, like I said earlier, charge for the pond tour. 100% charge. You decide if that money goes to help cover your costs of the pond tour, if you're gonna give it to a charity, are you gonna work with another charity? Often, if you're working with charities, they'll help you do the marketing, which is, I think, something we should actually talk quite a bit about. Danielle, why don't you take marketing away at this point? When it comes to marketing, we share it to various local groups on Facebook. We also send out an email blast to all of our current customers that we have in our system so they can then share that information with anybody that would like to attend the event. We have posted flyers in local businesses in the area that they can share with people. People can take a picture of the QR code, they can register right then and there, and they can also purchase the tickets right at the retail counter while they're here buying product. A couple last little tricks. When you're thinking of marketing, and not so much marketing, but like the little detail things that have to happen, you wanna have a host house. So if you're gonna have multiple ponds on your tour, make sure there's a host house. Maybe that's your house. Maybe it's your favorite customer's house. But at that host house, maybe you're barbecuing. Maybe you have 100% you should have snacks and refreshments and that kind of stuff. There's different types of things you can do at the host house. The very least, you want the right signage. Imagine yourself pulling up to a house. You don't see anybody out in the front yard. You think you're supposed to be at the right house, but there's no signs that say pond tour. Signage, signage, signage. Make sure your customers get t-shirts that say aquascape or pond tour. Make sure your customers get the right signage a week beforehand so they can put signs in their yard to direct the traffic down the right side or the left side. Make sure every house has coolers. Are you doing gifts for your host houses? Are you going out there a week beforehand, two weeks beforehand, and kind of prepping the pond, making sure that it's up to your standards? I don't think you have to have employees at every single house. It's not necessary. In fact, I would prefer that our customers act as our salespeople. And imagine going into a, somebody's backyard and a past customer is talking about living that lifestyle rather than an Aquascape employee. It's gonna come from the customer's house way more genuine, way more from the heart, whereas from an employee, it's gonna sound like a sales pitch. So we want our past customers 
kind of working in the backyard. And believe it or not, so many of them are so into that. They love showing off their big investment. They love showing off, not their investment, their hobby, right? And at the end of the day, that's just what it is. It's a hobby that they love, they love, they love, and they want you to love it too. All right, guys, kind of a different video for you. Way more on the backside of what's happening here in the office. Things that we're prepping for, even though we're still crazy busy out there building ponds. We're busy, Chris is busy, the rest of the maintenance team is busy. In fact, next week, we're gonna show you just how busy they are because this time of year, they're doing nettings. Leaves are coming down. They need to keep those leaves out of the pond so the pond is healthier, et cetera, et cetera. Chris is gonna take you through step-by-step step on now, not just how to net a pond, but how to net a stream, different size ponds, different situations for ponds. So you guys make sure you tune in next week where we're gonna walk you through way more maintenance, fall maintenance, and why we do that stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you soon, bye.